God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. God gives you the heart of Mary that you may ponder this story and treasure it in your heart. The joy of the Magi that you may open yourself to God and give God the gift of your life. The wonder of the shepherds that you may know that heaven and earth are filled with God's glory and peace. Welcome everyone, welcome to our service for this, the Sunday after Christmas. Everybody's very welcome. Um, we always like to give a, a welcome to anybody who's coming to join us for the first time. Um, everybody's welcome, but it's it, it's been so good to, to share in this community of people during this time. Um, this is the last Sunday for this year and I don't think that there are many who are going to be, feel sorry to leave this particular year behind. It's been traumatic for all of us and for some who've been experiencing some of the worst things from the inside, it's been totally devastating and, and we, we recognise something of that. And in the middle of that, my feeling is that what we found here in this community online, worshipping together Sunday by Sunday, has been something very special because we're going through a time when we're being told that we need to keep our distance and we really need to find ways of keeping connection and staying close to each other and i think we found that and so i'm i'm grateful to all the people who've been part of that um so there are those of us who've been leading the service and and especially martin who's been involved in 100 percent of the services we're so grateful to martin for all he's done so there's those but People are always saying this kind of thing, but I know why they say it. It's because it's true. It's those of you who join week by week, and some of you are able to join in with the chat, um, and others um, aren't able to join in in that way, but but you, you're just here and you're, you're part of it. And it's been very special. And for us as um, a Methodist circuit, I think we've found an identity together and, and, and that's been special. So thank you so much for being part of this. Um, I thanked Martin just now for um, all that he's done for these services. Um, he was particularly helpful this week because we agreed to try to get everything set up by Wednesday evening um, because uh, so, so that we have time for other kind of stuff, the other stuff that you do around Christmas. Um, and then on Christmas Eve, I was given permission to share a photo. Um, and I, there it is. There's the photo. Look at that. Isn't that wonderful? Um, so Martin, at the last minute, on Christmas Eve, um, he was willing to, to make space to, to fit this into the PowerPoint. So that's such a wonderful picture. It, it, it's so thrilling to us um, that Naomi and Luke is thrilling that they've come amongst us. And it's 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 so great to, to see the birth of, of Rachel. So welcome to Rachel. Croiso Rachel, Rachel Seren, she's called, as you can see. Um, and our prayers go out to that beautiful family. Um, and we pray that God's blessing may be upon them, that their love may grow and deepen with the years, that they may have great joy and happiness together. So that's wonderful. So that there's um, Naomi with Rachel. I've got a picture of Luke as well now, but it's too late to, to, to put that one in, but uh, blessings upon all of them. So that's that. Um, everything's going to be a bit of an anticlimax after that. I'm sure that's going to be the high point in the service, but hey, we are here to worship God. Um, and this week we're going to be thinking about the story of the Magi. Um, we're a little bit early for that, but no, Bonnie Bell's not going to be looking at it next week because we're going to be having our covenant service then. So that gives me an opportunity to sneak in and we'll be looking at the story of the Magi. And we're going to start worshipping God together with the hymn, As With Gladness, Men of Old. Join me in the 
grateful to um, Stuart McGregor from Swanscombe who is going to lead our opening prayer and then he's going to read the gospel reading for today so over to Stuart. Let us pray. Shout for joy to God all the earth. Sing the glory of the King. Give to him glorious praise. Say to God how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies come cringing to you. All the earth worships you and sings praises to you. They sing praises to your name. As a family of faith, we gather together, new creations in Christ, united in praise and worship of our Lord and Saviour, who blesses us and does not let our feet slip. We have come together as a family of God in our Father's house and in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his holy word, to bring before him the needs of the world, to ask for his forgiveness of our sins and to seek his grace. And through his son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service. Amen. This morning's readings comes from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in Judea during the time when Herod was king. Soon afterwards, some men who studied the stars came from the east to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the baby born to the king of the Jews? We saw his star when it came up in the east, and we have come to worship him. When King Herod heard about this, he was very upset, and so was everyone else in Jerusalem. 
He called together all the chief priests and the teachers of the law and asked them, where will the Messiah be born? In the town of Bethlehem in Judea, they answered. For this is what the prophet wrote. Bethlehem in the land of Judah, you are by no means the least of the leading cities of Judah. For from you will come a leader who will guide my people Israel. So Herod called the visitors from the east to a secret meeting and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem with these instructions. Go and make a careful search for the child. and When you find him, let me know so that I too may go and worship him. And so they left. And on their way, they saw the same star that they'd seen in the east. And when they saw it, how happy they were. What joy was theirs. It went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. They went into the house. And when they saw the child with his mother Mary, they knelt down and worshipped him. They brought out the gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh, and presented them to him. Then they returned to their country by another road, since God had warned them in a dream not to go back to Herod. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. And our next hymn is, It Came Upon the Midnight Clear. Whoever learns from a magi is worthy of death. That's something that was said by a teacher from just before the time of Jesus. 
And it shows the kind of attitude that at least some people had towards Magi at the time of Jesus. They felt that Magi were to be condemned. They were a bad lot. And not only Magi, but anyone who came to them, people who came to them for help, people who came to them for teaching, both the Magi and those who came to them deserved to die. They deserved to be got rid of. And, oh, I've lost my concentration. We're going to have another go at this. Um, I'm not sure what's going to happen, so we'll try. But I have got the full script, so if it just goes wrong again, I'll just read it to you. Whoever learns from a Magi is worthy of death. Those are words which were spoken by a teacher just before the time of Jesus. And they show the attitude that some people had towards Magi at the time of Jesus. They thought that Magi were a bad lot. They were to be condemned. And not only the Magi, but anyone who came to them, people who came to them to learn from them, people who came to them for help, all of them were a bad lot too. They were to be condemned. They were to be put to death. They were worthy of death. Magi is the word that's used in the Bible for those visitors from the East who came with their gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. We sometimes call them the three wise men. We, we sing of that. We three kings. Um, we, we talk of them as the kings sometimes. Well, it never says that there were three of them, although in tradition that has built up. There's Caspar, Melchior and Balthazar, but that's not in Matthew's gospel. They weren't kings 
And I suppose we could have a conversation about whether they were wise or not. What they were was magi. And magi is the word from which we get our word magic or magician. They were astrologers. They studied the dark of the nighttime skies for the messages of the stars. And they, dis they searched the dark of their nighttime dreams for the messages of their unconscious. They had practices which some people might today describe as being the dark arts, carrying out those kinds of things. They concocted strange potions and they carried out strange rituals. And people saw the kinds of things they did as being maybe a little bit sinister, quite a lot sinister, quite a lot mysterious. They did things which were strange. They did things which were unfamiliar. And when people are confronted by things that are a bit strange to them, a bit unfamiliar to them, sometimes they become a bit frightened. And when they become a bit frightened, then they start saying things like that teacher said, those who go to learn from a magi are worthy of death. What our magi had done, they had studied the stars. They were astrologers, as we've said. And they noticed through their study of the stars something wonderful that had happened in the sky, in the heavens. They noticed that a new star had appeared. They saw a star at its rising, a new star being born. What a wonderful thing, the birth of a new star. And they knew that that meant something. And what it meant, they believed, was that a child had been born who was the king of the Jews. And this child actually was more than the king of the Jews. That's what they said. But the difference that it made in the sky and the creation meant that this child was the king of the universe, the king of the cosmos. And this child deserved worship. Worship is something you offer to God. And they knew that they had to go and find this child and pay homage to the child and take their gifts. And that wasn't just bringing presents. That was offering gifts as tokens of the lives that they wanted to lay before this child, offering all that they had and all that they were to him. And so they set off on that journey. On the journey, many people think it took them a couple of years um, and it led them to Jerusalem. Because if this child was the king of the Jews, where else would you go? You would go to Jerusalem. And they asked around in Jerusalem, where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? And that created a at least a little bit of a buzz in Jerusalem. And no doubt Herod had his secret police. He had his ears on the ground and they brought back words that these strangers had come seeking to offer homage to another king, the king of the Jews, and bring gifts to him. And, and Herod, Herod was frightened by this because as far as he was concerned, he was the king. And if people came bringing gifts, they ought to be bringing gifts to him. And if people were going to lay down their lives to anyone, they should be laying down their lives to him. They should be offering themselves to him. He was the one who wanted to be granting pardons and saying who should be executed. He, he didn't want people coming or offering their lives to anyone else. People should lay their lives before him so that he can do with them as he pleases. So he wants to find out where this child is and get rid of him, destroy him, snuff him out quickly, as quickly as possible. So he summons the religious leaders and this is the first time in Matthew's gospel when powerful people get together. And when powerful people get together in Matthew's gospel, they are never up to anything good. This is the first time that happens. And I suppose the religious leaders aren't to know what is in Herod's mind, but Herod's intentions are bad. And he wants to find out where the Messiah is to be born. And they give their answer. He is to be born in Bethlehem. And so Herod secretly summons these strangers, these magi, and he, he smiles and smiles in front of them. He, um, he, he's all sweetness and light to them. 
and he wants to find out when the star appeared in the in, in the heavens when the when did the star appear so that he has some idea of the age of the child in case he has to start wiping out children he knows the the rough age group that he's looking at and he sends them away he sends them to bethlehem says you search you find the child and when you found him come back to me and let me know um, where he is so that i too may come and pay him homage and he's smiling and smiling i wonder if they can see i wonder if they have an instinct that beneath the surface he's a villain and that actually he's not wanting to offer homage to this child, but he is wanting to destroy him, snuff him out, get rid of him. Well, as you know, we'll come back to that moment, but they will find the child. And when the Magi find the child, they will be warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, but to go home by another way. So they will do that. And Joseph will be warned in a dream as well um, to get away with Mary and Jesus because the life of Jesus is threatened. And Joseph, Mary and Jesus will become refugees and um, take one of those dangerous refugee journeys which uh, were fortunately at the end of it for them. They, they will find safety, they will find asylum in Egypt. Herod will discover that in his view, he has been tricked. Well, he was the one carrying out the deceit. He was the one trying to trick the Magi, but as far as he's concerned, he's been tricked and he's furious with the Magi for this. But he has his plan B, and it is a terrible, wicked, horrific plan B. He sends in his troops to massacre, slaughter all the children in and around Bethlehem who are two years old and under. Bethlehem was just a small settlement of houses, just a, a small cluster of houses, not so many there. Um, the one estimate I read would that this would be that this would be in Bethlehem and the surrounding area it would be about 20 to 30 children that were massacred. It's a sickening moment. It's a horrific moment. But what it's showing us is that, well, it's reminding us that the horrors of the, this world are reflected in this Christmas story. Um, this is no sentimental story. We are confronted by the horrors of this world. We are confronted by those things which threaten us. When God comes amongst us in Jesus, he shares in with us in the wholeness of our experience, all our experiences. And that includes those things which threaten us, which threaten our survival. We're not alone when we're, our survival feels threatened. God is with us in that. When there are those things which are the horrors of this world, of which there are so many, God comes and shares with us in those experiences. And this story of the Magi reminds us of that. In the light of the horrors, we do well to resist, do what we can to resist those things which are, are evil. We do well to struggle for that which is good. And we do well to go on saying that prayer, deliver us from evil. But all that's later. Let's go back. Let's go back to that moment when the Magi have left Jerusalem and they're back on the back on the course, back traveling towards Bethlehem. And the light of the star is still guiding them and takes them to the place where Jesus has been born. And at that moment, they are overwhelmed with joy because the Christmas story confronts us not only with the horrors, but the Christmas story also confronts us with the wonders. Good news of great joy. Life contains both, and the Christmas story confronts us with both. And as we do well to resist evil and to pray, deliver us from evil, we do well also to take delight in the wonders and to en enjoy them. Take those pleasures which lighten our load and lift our spirits. The Magi go into the place 
where Mary and Joseph and Jesus are, and they offer to Jesus their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They make room for Jesus. They open themselves to Jesus. And that's our calling, to open ourselves to God, to open our lives to God, to offer the gift of our lives, all that we have and all that we are, we offer to God. And we do that all the time. Maybe particularly we'll be remembering how we do that as we share in the covenant service that Bonnie Bell will lead next week. We make of our lives a stable where Jesus may be born. We make of our hearts a manger where the life of God may be laid within us, that the life of God may come to live in us, that the word may become flesh once more and be born in us and live in us once more. We open ourselves to God as the Magi opened themselves to the child Jesus. And the same is the other way around. As the Magi open themselves to Jesus, so Jesus opens himself to the Magi. We heard at the beginning that um, the Magi were people who were sometimes condemned, sometimes put down, sometimes people said that they deserved to die, deserved to be got rid of. Well, Jesus made space for them. Jesus was open to them. And that's a picture of what Jesus will go on being like. There is no us and them with Jesus. There are those who others saw as being the outcasts, those who were pushed to one side, those who were condemned. Um, Jesus made space for them. Jesus opened himself to them, opened himself to people in all their variety, in all their diversity, with all their differences. And he calls us too to share in that way as he's open to people in their variety. He calls us to be open to people in, in, in all their variety as well. And as he's open to the variety of people, um, so he's open to you. I suppose as we come to the end of a year, maybe we look back and we see those things which haven't quite gone right, those things which we've done wrong, those ways in which we've maybe caused some damage sometimes, maybe hurt people, maybe caused some harm, that those things which we've done hurt, which have been wrong. And maybe sometimes we ask ourselves how acceptable we are as human beings. Could God possibly accept me? Could God possibly accept you? Jesus, as he makes space for people in all variety, so he makes space for you. The welcome is there for you. Of course, where we have done wrong, where we can make amends, we make amends. Um, where we can do better in the future, we seek to do what we can to do better. But we may know that the acceptance of God, the welcome of God is there for us as he opens himself to the Magi. So he is open to you. There is nothing you can do to make God love you more. There is nothing you can do to make God love you less. God sees you as you are, the bits you don't like about yourself, the bits you do like about yourself, and God accepts you out of the fullness of God's love, abundant love, overflowing love, inexhaustible love, um, and the sign of that love is the gift of this child given to you. So this story confronts us with the horrors and in the face of those, we pray, deliver us from evil. This story confronts us with the wonders and we take delight in them. We enjoy them. This story reminds us of how the Magi opened themselves to Jesus. And so we are called to open ourselves to God. And in the story, we see how Jesus opens himself to people in their variety and we share in that way. And as Jesus opens himself to people in their variety, so he is open to you and he accepts you just as you are to God. We give thanks and praise. Amen. I'm really relieved to have got to the end of that. Um, so we're going to sing a hymn, but we've already had it. So uh, we move into the we move into our prayers of intercession. Um, 
as ever, if you want to add your chat, uh, if, if you want to add your prayers, please do that in the chat, but please do it with um, just use initials to, 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 to keep people's privacy. Um, don't forget anything you put in the chat, it will be there for forever. So um, be careful about the things that you, you put in the chat and particularly join in with the prayers, but just use initials. So we pray. Let's pray. Eternal God, in Jesus, you, the creator of all things, enter into your creation. You, the timeless one, become subject to the world of time. You, who fill all things, become flesh and make your home among us. In Jesus, you share human experience to the full, you face the threats to survival, the horrors that destroy, the suffering that crucifies. Herod was determined to destroy Jesus. We are aware of the threats that endanger us, especially the many consequences of living with the coronavirus. We pray for those who have died, for those who are suffering from the infection now and those suffering from the consequences of having been infected. Those who have been bereaved. Those who are lonely because of the lockdown. Those who made plans and preparations to see those they love over Christmas. Then had to scrap the plans and undo the preparations. Those who have lost homes, jobs livelihoods, those who have no idea where they will find the money to get through the next few weeks, days, hours, those who are under pressure, working long hours at full capacity in the health service, in care homes, in schools, in food banks. We pray for those suffering the consequences of the coronavirus. Jesus became a refugee. We pray for refugees, for those who take dangerous journeys on packed boats with inadequate supplies of food and water and no real sense of how to navigate to their destination. Or those who travel in hot, airless containers where they try to send final texts to their loved ones, knowing that they will not see them again. We pray for refugees. Mary gave birth to her firstborn child, wrapped him in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger. We pray for those who have just become parents. Fill their hearts with love for their children. Give them all the strength they need. And may they find joy, delight and wonder in their children and in your amazing gift of new life. Jesus grew, became strong and was filled with wisdom. Your favour rested upon him. We pray for our children. May they too become strong and wise. May they know that your favour and blessing rests upon them, that they are enfolded in your generous love and in that assurance may they find freedom and life. And in a few moments of quiet, we each bring our own prayers to God.
we remember in your presence those who have died. May we with them at our journey's end be brought to where we offer the gift of our lives to you. And may we find that you accept and are open to us, that you make space for us in your dwelling place. And may we be overwhelmed with the joy that is made complete in you. We gather our prayers together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. When the angel announced the birth of your son, they said it was good news of great joy. When the Magi arrived at the home of Jesus, they were overwhelmed with joy. Later, when he got near to the cross, Jesus told his friends that his desire for them was that their joy be complete. This time is a time of joy, a time of glad tidings. At this time, our hearts are warmed because your son is Emmanuel, God with us. In him, heaven has touched the earth and the earth can never be quite the same again. In him, you are revealed because he is close to your heart and has made you known. In him, we are forgiven. You have set us free from guilt. You have set us free from that within which covers up your presence and stops us from seeing that you are deep inside working for our peace and joy. You have set us free from that within which prevents us from cooperating with your inner presence and holds us back from flourishing and being most fully ourselves. You have given us assurance that through Jesus we have peace with you. We are enfolded in your generous love, drawn into your empowering embrace and given the confidence that a place has been prepared for us with the whole creation in your heavenly home. This time is a time of inexpressible joy, a time of glad tidings. We bring our prayers in the name of the child born in Bethlehem, the wonderful counsellor, the mighty God, the everlasting father the Prince of Peace. Amen. So thank you all for being part of this act of worship um, today. Um, we'll be back next week. Um, Bonnie Bell will be leading the service then. That will be our covenant service, which is our opportunity to offer ourselves once more to God, to, to, to recognise that God enfolds us in God's generous love. Um, and that is always true. And that's the foundation. But in response to that, we offer ourselves all we have and all that we are to God. Um, so that's next week. Um, thanks for, for being with us as part of this week's service. Thanks again to Martin for keeping me going when I nearly collapsed there. Well, I did collapse, actually. But there you go. I managed to get up again. So I suppose it's OK. Um, um, and thank you to Stuart also for leading the prayers and for the reading. Um, we're going to finish with the carol, Joy to the World. Thank you.
And this is a poem, um, it's called If You Want, and it's by John of the Cross. If you want, the Virgin will come walking down the road, pregnant with the holy, and say, I need shelter for the night. Please take me inside your heart. My time is so close. Then, under the roof of your soul, you will witness the sublime intimacy the divine, the Christ, taking birth forever as she grasps your hand for help. For each of us is the midwife of God, each of us. Yes, there, under the dome of your being, does creation come into existence eternally through your womb, dear pilgrim, the sacred womb of your soul as God grasps our arms for help, for each of us is his beloved servant, never far. If you want, the Virgin will come walking down the street, pregnant with light, and sing. God comes to you now, humbly asking for room in the stable of your heart, in the manger of your soul, that the word may become flesh once again in you as you give birth to the life of God and bear Jesus and his love to the world. The blessing of God, creator, saviour and spirit be with you now and always. Amen. <laughs>